I'm going to start my Jolly Classroom lesson by clicking on the main page. This will bring me to the three steps of Jolly Classroom and in step one I'm going to select my lesson for the day. It's in group four, but before I start my lesson, I'm going to look at the downloadable resource to see what it contains and also how I can use that in my lesson planning. I'm going to start my lesson and I'll go to the drop down menu that contains all the activities within the lesson. I'm going to start with flashcards as this is a way the children can revise all the sounds that we have previously done and the new ones. Plus, there is a bar at the bottom indicating my progress and tips and guidance for teachers. I can move on with the flashcards and pause on any of the tiles so the children can read the graphene and say the sound. The next activity is listen and write. Children are using their skills here to listen to the sound and using the tiles on Jolly Classroom, write what they hear and they can check and also it's a good opportunity for emerging handwriting. And the sound here is A, and the children have previously learned this sound, so we're constantly consolidating and constructing children's knowledge. The next activity is the story. The story helps children hear language in a context, and the illustration provides plenty visual cues for children to make connections with the sound and also learn new vocabulary. Here we have Thai, Magpie, but we also have Fly and Butterfly that have the same sound and we'll explore those spellings when we move into the other steps. Moving on to the actions. Children need to be reminded of the actions and here we have a multisensory approach to the actions that children can hear, see and the kinesthetic movements. This appeals to the emerging learning styles within your classroom. Continuing with the emerging handwriting, formation is extremely important so children know the direction and the flow of the letter shapes. Here they can follow the cursor, do air letters and make that hand-to-eye coordination. For when we move on to the next step, which is actually forming the letter. The bubbles encourage the children to continue and they follow the direction of the arrow. This transposes well for when children have the skills to write on paper. And here the children are reminded to not to forget the dot on the eye. This is the children's blending skills and also how many sounds there are in each word. As we move on to segmenting, children will hear the word untie, they will drag the graphemes to the box and then it will self-check. If it's correct, the box will turn green. Children can listen to the word again and for this activity I've used the tools so that the children can put the dots underneath the words so that I know how many sounds they can hear. And as we continue with the segmenting, children have options of listening to different words. The match words to pictures, we have the visual cues for language acquisition, children are beginning their reading skills, and here they have to elect the right picture to match the sentence. As we move on, children are presented with different visual cues, and then they can elect the correct one to fit with the comprehension of the sentence. Finally, we're bringing all these skills together using the visual cues, the emerging handwriting, and also the sound that they have just learned. Children can click and see the word. This is a multitask activity where children are reading, writing, using their knowledge of the word and also developing their vocabulary. And this could be extended by asking children to put the word into a sentence.